What's up guys, Joe here. Welcome back to my channel and today we are back with the Uno X career mode heading well and proper into season two today. And since the previous episode, Tobias Harland Johansson has won the Tour de l'Avenir in real life. What a rider. He now has 74 mounts in in game two and I cannot wait to continue watch him develop. But coming up in this one, we do have the Tour of Oman first. Some of you guys said you want to see that race, the Casca Almira as well. Then we head to the Volta Algarve for a recent parkour there. So plenty of races coming up in this one. Races that I really am looking forward to. And we don't have a sponsor objective in Oman. And you can see some hills, some flat stages as well. We do have a climb, which will decide the GC for sure on stage five. So a really enjoyable race coming up, hopefully. And looking at our lineup very briefly, before we get underway, it will be Christopher Halvorsen leading us in the sprints. Probably Sharmig leading us in the GC. Maybe Torsten Train as well. Hulegaard is here alongside his brother as well. But Marcus Hulegaard has signed for Trexler Gifredo in real life. What a signing that is for them. Let's get underway. Away we go then. And every time I see our new jersey, I get very excited. I almost forget that we have it. And then, oh. We load the game and what a sight it is. This stage took a very long time to load as well, so I'm expecting a beautiful scene, which we have here in Oman. Andre Ponomar as well, the youngster who was at the Giro, is at this race. Let's take a quick look at the full start list. Matthew Vanderpool headlines the start list. Croyd's Vikings here, Tobias Foss, Aran, Hindley, Chavez. So we do have some good riders here for the GC. Umba as well, very talented rider for Androni, but we do have some good riders here, but definitely, if we get some good days on the big GC days, I think we could maybe win the race. An old friend as well, Eva Scarset is here with, I believe, his brother as well, now racing for different teams. Sorry, Scarset, I, I do apologise for not re-signing you. So the breakaway are caught. We are heading to the front of the group, and I'm not actually sure who the sprinters are. We definitely need to look out for here, to be honest with you. Luca Wackerman is here, Tom Devrient as well, but to be honest, I think Halvorsen could definitely challenge for this stage. He's on a good day. We have Marcus and Daniel Hulagard to lead him out as well. So 5k to go. Here goes Anders up to 99. I worry about Daniel Hulagard's flat stat. Oh my word, and look at his red. Daniel Hulagard's flat stat and Marcus Hulagard's, to be fair. Really, really impacting their use of reds. You can see Hulagard only 70 flat on the day, which doesn't mean we can go 99 just yet with his brother. Let's go 99 now. 2k to go. Maybe sprint. Here goes Daniel leading out Chris Halvorsen into the final kilometer. Here goes Halvorsen going for the line. Vanderpool is here. Ida Schelling is here. We try to resist. It's going to be very close. And I think we just about take stage one at the Tour of Oman. That is absolutely a wonderful way to start the race. Lovely stuff. Win in the bag. Let's move on to stage two. Okay, some good news today because we will be riding the Ronde van Vlaar and great stuff. We will be riding Gemp Wevel Gem as well, but not the E3 Bink Bank Classic. Not quite sure why that is. At least we have Ronda in the bag. So apparently this is a flat stage. I can't really see it myself. Looks very hilly to me. And that means surely Matthew Vanderpool is the favourite if he attacks. Halvorsen, if we can cling on to Vanderpool, could maybe challenge. So Halvorsen holds the yellow leader's jersey, of course. I have been working on the front a little bit, but looking at the parkours coming up, this first climb coming up as well in particular, I think it may be difficult for uh, Chris Halvorsen to hold on today. Let's see though how he gets on up this climb. And you know what? We're actually going to be okay. We still have over 100 riders in the group over the top and only one more short hill but much closer to the line to come. So Train and Sharmig, I think, are just going to try and follow attacks on this climb. Otherwise, let's try and keep Halvorsen in play over the top. It's quite difficult. 2k, a bit of a wall as well. Do I attack with Anton Sharmig? Probably not for the GC. I think it's best to go for Halvorsen today. I just don't think we'll be able to take any big time. So for me, it doesn't seem like it's worth it. And I think we are going to be able to hold on with Halvorsen if he's not blocked off. Here we go then, only 4k to go, we crest the climb, Hal Vorsen is just trying to hold the wheel of his train, hopefully he can recover now in this descent, sorry if uh, there are some small lag spikes with this stage, anyway, I think we're going to be okay, let's go 99, maybe sprint even with Vidderberg, let's just go for it, Hulagar will have to be our backup option in this one, Hal Vorsen trying to save and go for the line, here we go, sprint with all our riders, Hulagard trying to follow Vanderpool, come off his wheel. Hal Vorsen is coming as well, but Matthew Vanderpool is too strong today. He wins the second stage. Will we hold on for second place? I don't think so. I think that will go 
to Ida Schelling and we miss out on bonus seconds as well. And that also means that Vanderpool does take the leader's jersey, no real surprise right there. Uphill finish today and I think this literally screams Matthew Vanderpool. Some very nice race days in this one for sure. Anton Sharma gets a nice plus two. Daniel Hallgaard a plus five. I think it could be a little too difficult for you, my man. So we're being treated to a little preview of the finish right now. I can tell you it's very steep, very difficult. Definitely one for the punches by the looks of things. If we take a look up the road, you can see the finish. Very wide road. We need to be very patient on this climb. So I actually decided to attack for some reason with Anders Gusset. We're now on the breakaway. Four riders left there. Chun Kai Feng there as well. We have about 50 seconds. Just means the other teams are going to have to tempo rather than us on the front all the time. So we're holding fort behind. Watching Quebec try to bring in Anders Gusset, who has dropped everyone else in the breakaway, of course. He is going to be caught before the finish. It just means we've saved some energy on the rest of our riders, I believe, into the final 5k. We're not going to pull him in, but we're going to stay right on the wheel of the other teams. And now entering the final 3k, maybe Torsten Train can follow another of the favourites. Can't really see any right now. There's Narvaez. He's going to go for an early one. Train's going to try and follow those guys. Look at the acceleration, though. Almost impossible to follow. Only 2k to go. Let's up the rhythm with maybe Vidaberg up to 95. We have the energy to do so, but again, trying to remain very, very patient on this finish. There's Narvaez. He's surely going to be caught. Aliotti as well. Here goes Hulagard up to 99. Hulagard, or sorry, Daniel Hulagard is going to struggle, I think. But Anton Sharma coming through. Maybe Marcus Hulagard as well. And it's going to be a 1 2. 1 2 for the team today. Let's celebrate as we cross the line. Anton Sharma is a winner at the Tour of Oman. Marcus Hulagard second place as well. What a stage that was. Great stage for the team. No real time gaps, to be fair, bar, of course, the bonus seconds. But we're starting to see the stronger riders at the Tour of Oman this year. Sharmig, those bonus seconds could be crucial on the mountain stage coming up. And Rigoberto Aran actually withdraws from the race, so we won't have to deal with his competition on that climb. But before that, we do have a kind of punchy sprint. I think this one, to be fair, will be for the pure sprinters. And so before the finish line, we've actually had a couple of attacks here. Dion Smith, Narvaez, Hanau as well. Trying to join Simon Clark, who's also up the road. But as expected, it is going to be some kind of mass sprint, despite that uphill finish, in my opinion. And so Anders Garset bringing our guys right to the front. We need to be very, very patient on this climb. Chris Harper is trying something, actually, for Yumbo Visma. But Anders Garset comes to the fore to try and help out his teammates. Let's put Sharmig and Train on a, a effort cursor so they can not lose time today. Here we go. Vidaberg comes to the four. We have Hulagard on his wheel. Then Hal Vorsen. Let's go. Hulagard going for the line. Hal Vorsen trying to hang on into the final kilometer. Can he go for it? I think we've gone too late today. Let's see. Hulagard coming through. Hulagard coming through. Marcus Hulagard just about steals it in Oman. What a win for Marcus Hulagard. And Van Zipel will be gutted with that loss. Simply lovely win again for the team. We've got a hat trick with three different riders right now. Oman is treating us very kindly for sure, but Vanderpool holds on to the leader's jersey. And great news because Anton Sharmik hits his fitness peak just in time for the big stage coming up. And here we go, the Green Mountain. It's not the longest climb. Looks pretty steep to me though. Chavez is here. Hinley, Louis Mikeyes, Tobias Foss, Michael Stora. We do have some serious competition just hoping Sharmig hits a good day. And it's a beautiful sight, guys. It really is because Anton Sharmig gets a plus four day, taking him to 79 Mountain. With those time bonuses we already have, can we go and win this race? Here we go then, 10k to go. I did manage to take all of the bonus seconds available here with Vidberg. Hulagard and Torsten train, but Jonas Vidberg is going to try and place Hulagard, then train, and then of course Sharmik, who is going to try and finish things off today. Vanderpool, can he hold on? The climb is uber steep, as you can see, an average gradient of almost 10%. And so Vidberg's job is to place our guys at the foot of the climb in the lead, and that is exactly what he has done right here. Maybe he can do a little bit of protecting Hulagard. Up to 87, Sharmig is going to be so comfortable at this rhythm, so we need to make it difficult so the other riders are struggling. And here we go, we have the first attack. Sonny Colbrelli launching an attack. We have Hinley shelling here as well. Sharmig getting forced back a little bit for my liking. So you know what? Let's go like this. Hulagar can try and hold on, set a rhythm. Let's go up to maybe 85 with Anton Sharmik. I think Hulagard is going to struggle to hold on to the pure climbers. There goes Jai Hinley. He is off 
on the green mountain. I'm going to conserve a little bit for the final section of the climb. So Train is going to do his work with 3k to go. Look at the energy being absolutely sapped by the percentages on show today. Only 2k to go. Train has done a brilliant job right now. As soon as he is done with red, we can release, I think, Anton Sharmig to go on the attack. Can he attack these guys? Stora, Chavez, can they follow? Not immediately. Only 2k to go. There you go. We have a gap with Anton Sharmig. A very minor one at that. Hinley is trying to hold on. Hulagard is struggling. Even Sharmig is struggling with these percentages right now. Oh, and here comes Esteban Chavez. Here comes Esteban Chavez. And you know what, guys? I think I've been too aggressive here. I think I've been way too aggressive. Look at Esteban Chavez go. It's going to be Hinley or Chavez. Chavez cracks. Hinley is going to win, I think, the Tour of Oman. And Sharmig is going to collapse to the line, is he? Oh, my word. We've been outclimbed here by Matthew Van Der Poel. Sharmig. I attacked too early. I was too aggressive, too confident with the race day. And Joy Hinley, I think, is going to win the Tour of Oman unless it's a miracle ride by Matthew Van Der Poel. Work to do for us then. Joy Hinley is going to win the Tour of Oman. We move up to the top five, but Joy Hinley does overtake Matthew Van Der Poel. Final stage then, and one final chance for the sprinters. So Jonas Widerberg has been working for his team the entire race. I just decided to try attacking up to the breakaway. Let's try and give Widerberg some joy. We don't really have any strong companions here, but we're on a decent day and maybe we can pull off a miracle. So of course, part of my thinking here is the fact we have terrible race days with our sprinters, so much so that Helvorsen has been dropped on this minor hill before the finale. So I don't think we're gonna win this stage. Anyhow, Widerberg, come on my man. We have a minute, 28 gates to go. And so Widerberg has now been caught. I'm following some wheels. Marcus is on Matthew Van Der Poel's wheel, at least, with, oh sorry, Either Schelling's wheel I went for in the end. Hulagard is just trying to follow some of the guys relaying at the front. And maybe I could go for an early one. Maybe we could go for a flyer with Daniel Hulagard. Let's do it right now. There goes Daniel Hulagard trying to get the jump on everyone else. Here comes Marcus into the finish as well. But Daniel has the lead entering the final meters. And Daniel Hulagard wins the final stage. What a beauty that is. Somehow that came off. We have a fall in the final as well. Mass crash at the finish line. Doesn't seem like any of the favourites are involved, but what a way to end this race. Well, despite missing out on the overall victory, we have to be delighted with our race. Daniel Hulagard, Chris Halvorsen, Anton Sharmek and Marcus Hulagard all winning a stage in Oman. Van Der Poel took the sprinter's jersey in the end though, um, as well as of course Jai Hindley winning the overall. Next up then we head to the Clasca de Almeria in Spain. Should be a good one. Always enjoy this race. I remember having a great edition of Almeria with T-Mobile where we destroyed the field trying to drop Sam Bennett. Anyway, Magnus Court is going to be our man or Rasmus Tiller in today's race. The likes of Askren, Sagan and Jasper Sturven are the favourites. And I must say guys, I was very disappointed to see some comments, some of you not enjoying Rasmus Tiller's new Norwegian champions jersey. How could you say it? It's an absolute beauty in my opinion. And a plus three day, we could see him maybe taking the victory in it later. And so like that race I did with T-Mobile, I am trying to make it quite difficult, trying to drop some of the pure sprinters. Caleb Ewan is here. If we bring him to the line, he's quite simply going to win. So this uphill section is our final chance to drop some riders. But to be honest, our team just aren't really feeling good enough. I know Caleb Ewan is still right to the front. So we may as well, I think, conserve our resources at this stage. And to be honest, I think this is a perfect example of where we are as a team right now. I've really tried to open up this race. We still have 90 riders here with T-Mobile. I managed to get it down to around 20 riders. So really a sign of the phase we are at with this team. One day, hopefully, we can completely blow up races like this. Okay, now we have attacks in the final 10k. Standerwolf is on the attack. It seems Jasper Sturven is trying to attack. Nikias aren't as well. Maybe I can try and follow some of these and just see what happens. So you can see Magnus Court is trying to follow Peter Sagan at this stage. Rasmus Tiller getting forced back in the group. That is not ideal. Oh my, here we go. Do we have counter attacks? Not quite yet. Maybe Rasmus Tiller can time his effort right now. Let's try. Only four kids go. Tiller goes. Can Sturvan follow? He's just attacked. How does he have the red to follow? He doesn't completely. We do have some separation. Oh, we've been dropped with Magnus Court. This is far from ideal. And Rasmus Tiller has been caught. Let's sit up. Hopefully let Magnus Court get back in. Such a messy finish. Here comes Magnus Court Nielsen into the finish. We're going to try and sprint. Oh, my word. Look at this. Absolute mess of a sprint to conclude this race. Magnus Court is going to try and come through. 
Dylan Green of Aiken is just beaten by Caleb Ewan. What a mess. We do end up with a top five though. Anyway, following that absolute disaster in Almeria, we head to Portugal to the Algarve. This is always a fun race. I don't think I've played these parkours before. I think Remco won on these parkours in real life. Very interesting uphill finale right there. I, I remember Remco beating Maxi Shackman on that stage, I think. Hilly stages and a TT to finish. And with that in mind, as we head to Lagos today, a place I've actually been in Portugal, we have quite a few strong time trialists on our squad. Larson, Captain Price, Wearing Gold and the debut of Peter Mogensen. He makes his debut here in the Algarve alongside the Johannesson brothers. Henskul Madsen is here. Wearing Gold for the sprints as well. It is a very exciting team with so much young talent, especially the Johannessons, Mogensen, Wearing Gold, everyone here I'm excited about. Away we go. Here is the man, Peter Mogensen, in his Uno X debut. Cannot wait to see what the Dane can do. I'm not sure if he's leader though. Tobias Johansson, the winner of the Tour de l'Avenir, like I mentioned, on a plus four. Obviously not a GC day today, but um, it's going to be a difficult decision who leads us at this race. And that is such a nice problem to have for a change. So we may as well take a look at the start list then here in Portugal just to see our competition. Kung is here. Joao Almeida is here. Very good rider, of course, for the Koenig. Probably the favourite for the GC. Uh, we have David de la Cruz, Comrade Micah for that beautiful new UAE team Emirates jersey as well. You can see the rest of the guys here, but probably Joao Almeida is the rider to watch. So we have about 16k to go. Finding it quite difficult to stay to the pointy end of proceedings though. Wearing gold, not on a good day. Neither is Larson. Any of our leaders really, and you can see, but even getting dropped briefly on these hills. Finding it very difficult to deal with the rhythm at the moment. And we have been dropped actually. Luckily, though, the absolute powertrain that is Captain Price able to bring us right back to the front of proceedings. The breakaway have been caught. We do have one more very, very, very minor hill with about 2k to go. We need to be wary of it, though. However, Werenschgold has been pushed off the wheel. Come on, Werenschgold, get back to Larson's wheel. Otherwise, Nicholas Larson is going to have to be sprinting for us today. Captain Price is finally done. Werenschgold is here. This minus two is going to massively hamper him, though. I'm pretty sure of that. This is that final little hill. And we have an attack to eat. Jonathan Narvaez, what an attack that is by Jumbo Visma. But he's done. Oh my word, apparently working for his teammates. Here we go. Nicky Assant into the final. There goes Larson. Ronish Gold is ready to launch into the final kilometer. Can any of our guys challenge today? Arndt is going for it. Here comes Ronish Gold though. And I think in the end... Are we going to beat Dynasty? It's going to be close, but yes, Soren Werenschgold wins in the Algarve. What a start on a shocking race day as well. Really difficult stage, really difficult stage for Werenschgold in the end, but we do manage to resist, and after some teamwork, we do take the lead of the race. Next up, though, probably the Queen stage. Werenschgold won't be wearing the leader's jersey after this. Really, really enjoyable final. Plenty of constant hills, and then an uphill grind to the line. Really suits Joao Meza, you have to say. Conrad and Ruben Guerrero, the other riders to look out for. And this is where the dilemma begins because Tobias Harlan Johansson, plus three. Peter Mogensen, a plus three. We have to really split the leadership, surely. Hinskel Madsen even could be a genuine co-leader at this race. Same for Anders Johansson. We have a great problem to have, but it's a problem nonetheless. Who are we going to ride for today? Probably Tobias, but I would like to give some of these other guys a chance too. One immediate worry though is the amount of riders trying to join today's breakaway. I saw Aula there, of course, a legend from Kaya Raval. Freddy Rodenberg, a former rider, I just spotted today. There he is, Rodenberg, who left our team at the end of last season. But this is going to be almost 20 riders up the road. Okay, we have 37k to go. The pointy end of the stage is coming. What a stage this is, guys. Unbelievable stage. And I'm gonna I'm gonna install Mogensen and Tobias as our two leaders, and maybe we'll send Mogensen up the road early see what he can do I think he'll probably be caught and then we'll try and ride for Tobias unless Mogensen can hold on so we're still just hovering to the front Mogensen maybe could have launched by now I think I'll wait for the next climb and then maybe launch Mogensen once most of the breakaway are caught there we go then most of the breakaway have been caught and I'm struggling to see the opportunity Hinskel Madsen is still here working hard so I think we'll use him on this climb, on the next climb, Mogensen is going on the attack. And I've tried valiantly to hold on with Wearing Gold for as long as possible. What a ride by the big man on the plus three day. And so we're making sure Tobias is to 
foot the full. Henskel Madsen with a wonderful ride right here. He can maybe go up to 95. Tobias can just sit in at 85 right now. Let's see who follows Peter Mogensen. Once he attacks right here, no one immediately, it seems, Polo actually, trying to follow the Argentinian rider, trying to follow Peter Mogensen early. Guerrero is here. Okay, it's going to be difficult to get away with Mogensen apparently right now. So I think we're going to have to stay in this group and maybe work for Tobias who is feeling a lot better. And look at this group, absolutely disintegrate over the top of this climb. Mogensen can sit up, 12K still to go. Tobias is our only leader right now on the stage. We only have about 20 riders at the front. Rui Costa riding for Porto. I can see this happening one day, guys. Costa there in the Porto Portuguese team. We are approaching an intermediate sprint. I think we'll take these seconds as well with Mogensen and Tobias. It's only three and two seconds respectively. And it seems clear at this stage, we're not the strongest team here. David De La Cruz working for Rafael Micah, Patrick Conrad as well in that Austrian jersey for UAE. Let's be cautious, only 25 here. Here we go. Patrick Conrad's on the attack. We have Ruben Guerrero trying to follow Joao Almeida as well. We probably need to react to this. So Mogensen is going to try and do his best. Here goes Tobias trying to bridge to that group. Antonio Zaburi, a T-Mobile legend. Housing Bullock right there trying to follow Tobias Johannesson up the road. Look at the group behind. It has been blown to absolute smithereens. We only have 4K to go and Joao Almeida has gone. And Tabury is unable to bridge to our wheel correctly. We need to be careful though with our energy spendage right now. Guerrero, Comrades and Polo, we're following the wheels, trying to save a little energy. Only 2K to go. Probably stay there, actually. They're riding pretty well. But Joao Almeida, look at the man. He is absolutely gone. Let's go up to 85 with Tobias. Try and press it all the way to the line. Look at Joao Almeida dominating his home race. Here goes Patrick Conrad. Let's try and push away from Patrick. Almeida starting to struggle into the final. It's going to be a great showing. Really great showing by Tobias. Almeida celebrates. Can we catch him on the line? Oh my word, it's going to be a second place. But what an epic stage this was of the Volta Algarve here. Oh my word, so close. That was a replay of Shackman versus Remco on this stage. I think it was this stage anyway. And the Peloton has been blown to absolute smithereens. Oh, and such was our great rides. Great finish. We finish on the same time as Joao Almeida. Surely he'll defeat us in that time trial. But still, that was an epic stage. Hopefully we can cling on to a podium position in the GC. But only two seconds behind after that intermediate sprint, of course, as well. Mogensen, three minutes down in the end, but he still did a good job today. That was an epic stage. I loved it. On we go then after that epic. I've had a shave. We are ready to go and hopefully Rennschgold can double up today with another sprint stage. Should be, a, I think, a little more difficult than the first one though. And I must say, we have some very hot jerseys on today. Hansen in the blue jersey. I think that's the climbers jersey. Rennschgold as well in the red sprinters jersey. Looking fantastic and hopefully we can look fantastic in the finish as well. Absolutely splendid ride. Yes, again by Captain Price. Putting our guys right to the front. Only have three riders is left though 9k to go and we're not quite at the front in the prime position where you guys know I like to be in these sprints so we are a bit disjointed here coming into the final 6k but here we go look at that last one and where goal come right to the front let's put the pressure on right now we have Enkorn here now Vyas Tunison trying to move up as well but we are the dominant team right now in the final five kilometers Hensgul Madsen up to maybe 99 4k to go Probably a little early, but here comes Dainese as well. Christoph, Stefan Kung, there for some reason, not too worried about him. Jake Stewart is the man to look out for. He's on our wheel too. So here we go, 2K to go. Here goes Nicholas Larson trying to lead out Werenschgold. I'm going to try and go early. We have a lot of corners here in this final. Here comes Werenschgold, 500 metres to go. Is Larson going to hold on? Surely not. It's going to be close, but it's going to be Mike Tunison taking the win today. I think we're going to hold on for third place. Fair result again in a pretty good sprint fields and I think if we want to win the GC here in Portugal we have to make a move today and we have to gain time on Joao Almeida on terrain which suits him down to a tease so it's going to be very difficult we know we have the time trial to come on stage five so we need to make up ground here if we want any chance and let's be real we have the race day for it. a plus four day for Tobias this is one of his early season objectives by the way uh, which is why he's getting all these great race day conditions um but I am talking about beating Joao Almeida I must say like we should be beating the man. Look at the difference in attributes at the bottom left. It's pretty 
absurd right now that we're just up here competing with the likes of Almeida Conrad as well. So my tactic so far has just been to try and conserve energy with our main leaders at least, which we have done pretty well. And when we hit this next categorised climb, we have to try and attack the stage. We have to try and press on and hopefully put the other teams in some kind of difficulty. And that is exactly what we're able to do right now. Hinskel, Madsen and Larson have really kicked the tempo up. We have 24 riders at the front. Almeida is still here. I'm sure we'll get some riders back in. But let's try and keep this going for now. This is really advantageous to us. I'm not quite sure who is behind. Ryabashenko, Conrad is behind. Third place in GC. Let's kick on at the front of the race. We have absolutely exploded this race. Conrad is just about getting back on. I'm sure he's going to have spent a lot of energy trying to do so though. Almeida as well. Hopefully he's been in the group all the time though. Of course, Mogensen is now on the front working really difficult climb I think Mogensen is going to die pretty swiftly so let's actually swap this around we're left with the Hanson bros at the front of the race and look at the damage we have done already this is utterly insane I'm so happy with how we're racing right now and so Anders is on the front. We have Almeida, Polo's here, Conrad's still here, to be fair. Youngles as well, but the likes of Della Cruz are gone. The likes of Antonio Saburi, the white jersey who did so well in that other queen stage of the race is done too. So this is what I would call the peloton at the Volta Algarve. Unbelievable stuff. 13 riders, Mogensen still here, working to bring water. And you know what, guys? I think the moment could be coming. I think the moment could be coming where we are going to strike out with Tobias Johansson. It's an all or nothing move I think we're going to have to try and go for here today. Johansson, at least Anders is done. We have some attacks from our group, actually. Guerrero is going, Novias is going, and we've been caught on the back foot here. Almeida is going as well, and we need to be up the roads, and that is not where we are right now with Mogensen working for us, but he's starting to struggle. Let's get back on ASAP because this is not ideal. Oh, and look at this. Almeida is literally up the road. I'm going to have to go. Going to have to go right now with Tobias. It's going to have to be a big attack. We need to join this group that Joao Almeida has found himself in. It was a terrible decision not to jump there straight away. And there you go. We're just about back in at the front of the race, are we? Look at Almeida. Oh, my word. I don't believe it. I do not believe it. Joao Almeida is single-handedly pulling himself to victory whilst we are completely done out the back. Oh, this is excruciating. Nonetheless, I do think we have enough energy to go like this to the line. We only have 3k to go with 20 seconds off the back. I cannot believe that play from the AI. Exceptional stuff, you have to admit. Johansson now trying to bridge up and they go. We are back on to the group. There goes Almeida. As soon as we catch up, Joao Almeida is different level. I can't see us winning the Volta Algarve from this point, that is for sure. Let's try and bridge up at our own rhythm and see what we can say today. Conrad is done, and that is surely because of all the work we did earlier in the stage. And I hope that probably having quite a big impact on our performance today. Should have followed that move though initially, and Joao Almeida is absolutely riding away from the field here. The class of the field, Joao Almeida wins again at the Volta Algarve. Bob Youngles will be second, Costa will be third. I think we're gonna finish just about in the top five as well. So we save a good GC, I think, here, as those riders ahead of us weren't doing too well in the GC before. Joao, you are too good. I do apologise. I really do for trying to challenge you at your home tour. Anyway, what we did do today, crucially, was drop Patrick Conrad by over a minute. So Conrad now well down in the GC. He was our closest challenger for that podium place. We now have over a minute on Polo. He can't TT. Rui Costa, he can TT a bit. Ruben Guerrero, not the best time try this, but a minute in the TT. Hopefully, we can hold on to this second place, even though, of course, we're never going to get close to Almeida. 18k to hold on to our P2. Let's see if we can do it. Of course, though, it's not all about GC. We do have Captain Price here. We do have Werensch Gold as well, who hopefully... I'm thinking could potentially challenge for today's stage. Under the final kilometre banner then, the Flam Rouge. I think I've been too cautious overall with Captain Price here. We are going to take the lead by a long way, but I don't think it's going to be enough in the end. Saying that though, as our other two TT specialists at the race here, Wernish Golden Larson get underway. I think we're about to go 1-2, are we, with Wernish Golden Captain Price? Yes, we are. Captain Price still 
holds the lead of the stage. But for how long? I'm not sure. We hold it by quite a margin. Let's see where Larson goes across the line as well. Only a couple hundred meters left for Nicholas Larson. Is it going to be a professional 1, 2, 3? No, it's not because Rafael Rice has taken the lead of the stage without me even realizing. Can you believe it? Oh my. Henskul Mazda though looks likely to do a good time. Let's see where he goes. Yes, he does. Top five. So Peter Mogensen gets underway. He's 13th in the GC. Let's quickly recap how it looks. We have over a minute to Polo. He can't TT. Costa, Guerrero and Conrad are probably our biggest challenges. Youngles, I think. He's two and a half minutes back from us. He's surely too far back. So hopefully that second place shouldn't be too big an issue as Mikkel Björg clearly is much better than Captain Price right now at time trialing. And we have some great news because I think Mogensen is going to do a good time. But even better news, you can see Tobias is on a plus five day. Let's see Mogensen across the line. Top 10 showing his stage racing credentials right here. But Tobias at the first split, 21 seconds down. We're further back a little bit than the riders we need to be uh, ahead of in the GC. But it shouldn't be too big an issue. I think we have the margin with this race day. So Conrad is going to cross the line. He's 55 seconds down. Let's see Ruben Guerrero across the line next. He's not the best time trialist in the world. Albeit not too bad. 47 seconds down. Rui Costa is up next. He's provisionally fourth place in the GC. Quite a close battle for the podium places. Apparently, let's see. 55 seconds for him. Polo doing a very good time. I think this guy's a regen, actually. Not too sure. Very good attributes, though, for the Argentinian rider. As you can see, he's just over one minute down. And Johannesson is going to put in a mega TT here. Into 12th place, 37 seconds down. Let's see if Almeida wins the stage. No, he doesn't. Mikkel Björk holds on. What a time from Tobias right there with Captain Price and Morgan Simpson. Really good time trials. We have five riders in the top 20, only one in the top 10 though. So uh, not quite top heavy enough for us on this occasion. But Joao Almeida wins with relative ease in the end. I think though, we can be so, so proud with Tobias after this performance here. Look at the riders he's beaten and to be taking the challenge, albeit not quite good enough to Joao Almeida at the Volta Algarve, his home tour. We have to be super happy with him. Almeida dominates as well with the sprint jersey, KOM jersey and the youth jersey. We just about miss out on the team classification, although uh, we're not Movistar, so we don't mind too much. Look at all of the fantastic results we have collected in today's episode. We are having a flying 2022 season and we're only just getting started. Coming up next though, we do have the UAE tour. Let me know if you guys want to see that. I'm not quite sure if I'll play it. I might just skip to Omloop Pet News, but I've maybe show you some highlights from UAE and really get into the classic season with Strada, some Belgian and Italian races coming up. Anyway, guys, if you enjoyed today's episode, make sure you smash that like button. Really hope you did. Drop a sub if you're new to the channel as well. Tell me what you thought in the comments below. I cannot wait to continue with this season two and I will see you guys in the next one.